Now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker on newsroom innovation. Please welcome Audrey Serdon, who serves as the weather and climate editor at France Television, which earlier this year replaces traditional weather casts with something more weather, something more like a weather climate cast. So I'm looking forward to hearing what that's all about. Audrey. Yes. everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Right. right. Um, thanks for the invitation. Very happy to be here. Here to talk about the weather, which apparently everybody agrees on, so it's going to be an easy one. Um, so the weather forecast has been is pretty much as old as TV is. Its format hasn't changed very much over the years. But in France, at least, it's still an institution, <laughs> one that is like roughly somewhere between the Eiffel Tower and the baguettes, I would say. A very popular program that you watch as a family during dinner, one that brings a real service and a service that audiences want. But it's 2023, a time where giving the weather without seriously talking about climate change is very much like covering Wall Street in 2008 without ever mentioning the financial crisis. So change was much needed. The next question was, how do we integrate climate context within the weather forecast while keeping our audience engaged? Well, that's the task I was faced with earlier this year when we decided to upgrade our evening weather forecast at France Television, the French equivalent to the BBC. The goal was to instill some climate literacy in prime time on our leading channels without losing any viewers on the way. And we had quite a few because we can have like 10% of the French population watching us every night. And right, the good news is that seven months after the launch of our new Meteo Clima, which means weather and climate, very original, I'm happy to say that we succeeded in the sense that we've been gaining viewers and not losing them. So I'm going to let you in four lessons I've learned from building and editing this program. But first, I'll quickly show you what it looks like. I've had to cut big chunks for length um, to make it shorter. So you will mostly see the structure, but please check out in the beginning how viewers can see global warming happening in real time thanks to our eight-digit counter. It increments live during the show. And it, of course, shows the rise in temperatures due to human activities. Bonsoir à tous, très très heureuse de vous retrouver dans ce nouveau studio, dans ce nouveau décor pour le lancement de votre journal Météo Climat sur France Télévisions. Pour nous accompagner, ce tableau de bord avec ces deux symboles du changement climatique. Ce chiffre, c'est l'augmentation de la température de la planète liée aux activités humaines depuis 1900, 1 degré 18. Et cette frise qui montre le réchauffement mondial observé depuis plus d'un siècle. On y reviendra bien sûr au cours de nos différents journaux. Mais on commence évidemment avec vos prévisions météo, avec cette perturbation qui est arrivée au cours de la journée par le nord-ouest du pays. Et je dis donc hausse des températures et une petite dégradation dans le nord-ouest. Aujourd'hui, vous l'avez ressenti, une grande douceur sur le pays, voire de la chaleur. Ces chaleurs précoces qui se répètent d'année en année vous interrogent. Et c'est la question de Franck, de Nice. L'hiver n'est quasiment plus présent en France. Doit-on s'attendre à la disparition de nos quatre saisons Christophe Cassou, climatologue et auteur du GIEC, nous répond. Alors, il y aura toujours quatre saisons en France, hein, parce que les saisons sont dictées par la course du soleil dans, dans le ciel sur une année. Par contre, le changement climatique joue sur les saisons, sur la longueur des saisons et l'intensité des saisons. Si vous aussi vous avez des questions, vous pouvez nous les faire parvenir en scannant le QR code. On vous répond. There you go. So, thank you. That's nice. <laughs> so in real life, it lasts about four minutes in prime time. The structure is usually the one that you saw, so a quick climate intro, uh, the weather, of course, because this is the main thing for which people come to, to the program, the pivot to climate context, and then a viewer question and a scientist answering it. So here, the first thing I've learned, weather plus climat égale amour. <laughs> <laughs> So I had long been taught, like maybe many of you, that I should always differentiate weather from climate, mostly because one daily forecast can seem to contradict where the climate is all going. 
but I've come to see things another way. One climate scientist I've worked with tends to say that he has a really good metaphor. He says the weather is a still image within a much larger and longer movie that is the climate. You cannot understand the still image if you don't put it in the context of the movie it is featured in. This is what we journalists call giving context, a fundamental part of our job on any story. So that's our program's approach, giving the weather and then zooming out to let viewers into the broader climate story. So as an editor every day, my job is to find this pivot between the daily weather and the climate context. Because it, it's really when you manage to find what the, to really link what the audience can see in the sky or in their garden to the bigger picture that the climate context becomes relatable and engaging. And not to worry, there's always climate context to draw out. During heat waves, of course, it's really obvious, but you can also do it when it's colder than usual. So we're gonna have a look. Here, as you can see on that spring day, temperatures all over France are below average. How does such weather make sense with global warming? Well, that's the question a lot of our readers, not readers, <laughs> also we have them, but viewers uh, are asking. And so to answer that questions, we zoom out in time. And we put this cold weather period within a larger context. And it's obvious on this graph that you see, I'm gonna move around. Um, warmer days above far outnumber colder ones over a year. And she explains it. In a warming climate, you can still have colder periods, but just much less often. I believe this kind of explanation is a real service for the audience, and as much as knowing if they should take an umbrella tomorrow. Second lesson, climate news is better delivered by friends of the family. I say that because our anchors love to say that they're like friends to the audience, like familiar f smiling faces seen every day. An American study even suggested that weather anchors were more trusted by the viewers than other anchors. And I would say that with audiences living through devast the devastating consequences of climate change and the polarization that surrounds the, the issue, this extra level of trust and proximity is more than welcome to deliver climate news. But of course, it only works if we keep the very factual, non-conflictual, and accessible tone of the weather forecasts when we bring up the climate. Facts and explanation are the editorial drive of the program. We avoid all sorts of prescription. We will explain which food production emits most greenhouse gases, but we won't tell people how they should eat. Third lesson, climate news can be visual and playful. Well, that's a super important point to keep the climate part as accessible as possible. Uh, so it's an aspect I've spent a while working on. One answer is our dashboard. You've already seen it in the, the clip in the beginning. It's always on the set, a, v a visual reminder. So we can put it on, yeah. So you, you've seen the word option with the, the incrementing number, but here is like a local option, super important because it really helps viewers like understand how climate change manifests locally. Here you're seeing the dashboard with the counter here on Paris, which shows that during the last year, 89 days were below average temperatures against 276 days above average temperatures. It shows a very clear tendency and it really helps viewers understand how climate change is manifesting in their place, wh where they are. Second clip. This is the work of my colleague Nicolas Chateauneuf. Here he used augmented reality to visualize the billions of tons of CO2 we release in the atmosphere. And it's pretty effective. Um, this example is a favorite. <laughs> we aired this at halftime of a soccer game between two French cities, Nantes and Lyon. And a lot of the people watching were, of course, locals of the two cities. We were showing them their stripes and they could compare. And wondering, like, why are they slightly different? Of course, there are sci scientific explanation that we gave and it was super engaging for them. Fourth lesson, let the public ask and scientists explain. So at France Télévisions, as a public service broadcaster, we have a long tradition of asking audience their questions through a QR code that leads to an online form. 
During the COVID outbreak, I used to see in front of my eyes thousands of questions arrive in a matter of minutes. So it was really obvious for us that we should make our Meteo Clima interactive. And it brings very, very, very big things to the show. First, let's face it, viewers often have much better questions than we do. More practical, more direct. Here's a favorite. <laughs> I just love it. Karin, she asks, the sea level rises, but in my glass, when my ice cube melts, it doesn't overflow. Why is that? And we just never would have asked it this way, and it was super smart and effective. The answer from the scientist, too, was great. Second, the audience questions, they provide the best editorial compass I could ever hope for. Every morning, I start my day by reading them, and it's a gold mine of ideas. I see patterns and progress in the questions asked, and most importantly, I see the actual concerns of the audience regarding climate change. And to me, this is the best proof that climate news isn't something we force feed our public. It's something that they actually want, need, and ask for. There's a crave to understand something that deeply disrupts our daily lives. And because we know our audience trusts scientists, we decided to let them answer directly our viewers every evening. It has weaved a wide community of scientists around the program and created a bond with the public that we really appreciate. Right. Before I wrap up, one last thing. As I've seen our viewership go up, shares go up, and the great reception we got from the public, I'm more than ever convinced that to reach wide audiences with climate literacy, we need to invest in our already me uh, leading media products. Not just launch a new dedicated program that will appeal mostly to people already interested in climate. After seven months editing the Meteo Clima, I'm about to start a new role as climate editor of France Télévisions. Part of my job will be to make sure that this climate context is added everywhere it makes sense in our existing coverage. Because if it especially made sense for the weather, I do think it's true for many other editorial products. This is where we will meet the public that's not already paying attention, and I'm sure they will find it useful. Thank you. <laughs>